live and local. This is Fox 7 Austin News at 9. Tonight at 9, an emotional outburst after a former Bastrop County Sheriff's deputy is found not guilty of murder. A look at the Daniel Willis case and why the judge decided Willis acted within the law. A Texas teen becomes the latest victim of malfunctioning airbags. Witnesses say if it weren't for the bad equipment, she would have walked away from the fender bender. Plus, new video gives a different perspective about what happened last May when a fight broke out between rival biker gangs in Waco. We are united in prayer for Haruka and for each other. No parent, no brother, nor sister or friend should have to face this kind of sadness, this kind of loss. First tonight, the family of a UT freshman found dead on campus are grappling with the tragic news as Austin police continue to search for her killer. Haruka Weiser's loved ones released a statement today through UT President Greg Fenvis. He's joining investigators and in promising to find the person behind the violence and bring them to justice. We have team coverage tonight on this murder investigation and more on what students, faculty, and the community can do to stay safe until this man is found. Elizabeth Saab, let's start with you. Where are we and where are police on the investigation? Well, Mike and Rebecca, we've learned that Haruka had left dance rehearsals on Sunday night. She was headed to her dorm across the Waller Creek Bridge, just steps from where we are standing. Police say today they tell us that she was assaulted. Her roommate reported her missing on Monday. UT police tried to retake trace the steps, but it wasn't until a more extensive search of the area led to her body on Tuesday morning. And now police believe this man that as you can see in this video was the last person to see her alive. Today they released this surveillance video of a six foot tall black man. He was caught on camera Sunday night around 1130. He's walking with a pink or red woman's bike similar to this one on the north side of the DKR football stadium and Austin police say Weiser had left the drama building around 930 on Sunday night. As you can see in this map, it's across the street from the DKR stadium. And as I mentioned, she was walking towards her dorm and Mike and Rebecca, a 15 thousand dollar reward is now being offered for information that will lead to an arrest. You can call police with any of that information on the number you see on your screen. And you know, the words shocking and devastated are tossed around so much in our business that we've really become desensitized to them. But truthfully, that is the only way to describe how this community is feeling tonight. And as you can see, UT's clock tower is dark tonight in honor of Haruka Weiser. And Rebecca and Mike, I talked to some of her friends today, fellow dancers. They say the only way they know how to express themselves is through dance, and they will do so this weekend at the Bodies and Soul performance. It's likely there will be a tribute to her then. And as far as campus safety, well, Austin police say they are stepping up patrol here until that suspect is behind bars. And UT officials are also taking some extra steps to make sure students here are safe. Jennifer Kendall joins us live with that part of our story. The Texas Department of Public Safety and the Austin Police Department have both offered 20 officers to help with mounted bike and vehicle patrols on campus. DPS is also conducting a safety review of the UT campus to make recommendations that could include additional lighting, surveillance cameras, and other safety measures. There are already about 150 blue light emergency phones around campus. Those phones connect directly to the UT Police Department and have a geographic location on them, which alerts police on where to respond. There's also a program called SureWalk, where students can call in to be escorted by two volunteers to their home or car. Because of this latest incident, the UT Police Department will now be partnering with SureWalk volunteers. Our productivity has gone up 400%, or the usage has gone up 400% since the incident itself. Um, so people are definitely reacting in the sense that they want this, this service to, they want to use it. 
other things university leaders are asking students to do. Be aware of your surroundings. If possible, walk in groups at night. Avoid distractions like staring at your phone or listening to music when you're walking around campus. Back to you in the studio. Okay, Jennifer Kendall reporting live for us tonight. Thank you for that. He's down in Stafford, just outside of Houston, and uh, Ashley Paredes is down there covering it for us. So as soon as we get here, we go. We got a live shot. So uh, Ted Cruz, the winner, of Texas tonight. Thank you, Texas. God bless the Lone Star State. And God bless the great state of Oklahoma. America shouldn't have a president whose words would make you embarrassed if your children repeated them. Ted Cruz just getting started. A good night for him so far in terms of Texas. 41% of the vote tonight. All right, joining us to talk more about Cruz's Super Tuesday win, we have J.D. Gins, the executive director of the Travis County Democrats, and GOP consultant Matt Makoviak. Matt, starting with you, I mean, everybody knew it. Cruz had to win Texas, and he did, so, so far so good, I guess. He did. Look, uh, he won Oklahoma. Uh, he won Texas. He won Texas by a good margin. He is going to be clearly in second place overall in delegates coming out of tonight. It's exactly where he wants to be. And as we sit here right now and he makes his campaign speech in Houston, I'm sure he is essentially calling on Marco Rubio to get out of the campaign so that he can unite everyone other than Donald Trump behind his campaign going into March 15th when the states become winner take all. You have Ohio, Florida and Illinois voting two weeks from tonight. It's winner take all. The thoughts and the prayers of the American people are with the people of Belgium. Terror in Belgium. More than 30 people are dead and dozens more hurt after bombings at Brussels airport and subway station. ISIS is claiming responsibility for the attacks and is pledging more violence worldwide. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Warren. And I'm Rebecca Thomas. These attacks happened early this morning and tonight we know at least 34 people have been killed. It all began around 8 this morning with reports of gunfire and two explosions at the city's airport. An unexploded suicide belt was found in the aftermath. Then about an hour later, a third explosion rocked a metro station near the European Commission headquarters. Belgium has now raised its terrorism alert to its highest level after ISIS promised more violence in the UK. Fox's Greg Palcott has the latest tonight. We are told at least nine Americans have been hurt in the terror attacks, among them a service member and five members of his family. At this time, their identities have not been released. Three of the victims are men who are in Belgium serving missions for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 20-year-old Joseph Empey, 19-year-old Mason Wells, and 66-year-old Richard Norby were all seriously hurt in the explosions. All three are from Utah. They were accompanying a French woman who was on her way to a service mission in Ohio. That woman had gone through security when the bombs went off. She suffered only minor injuries. Now, the Mormon church released a statement this afternoon saying, in part, our prayers are with the families of the deceased and injured, including four of our missionaries who were injured and hospitalized. We also pray for the people of Belgium and France as they continue to deal with the uncertainty and devastation caused by the recent terrorist attacks. Airports worldwide have increased security, including Dallas-Fort Worth International. Heavily armed police with semi-automatic rifles were seen standing near the terminals today. North Texas-based American Airlines has confirmed all of its employees are accounted for, and they are working with customers who are stranded in Brussels tonight. Fire, man. My, my house. <laughs> New tonight, some very dramatic 911 calls are released from two separate house fires this morning in Austin. 
The Austin Fire Department tells us in less than three hours, smoke alarms saved the lives of nine people living in those homes. They also say this service is a good reminder to everyone with daylight savings in a couple weeks that it's a good time to make sure you have working smoke detectors. Fox 7's Rayanne Christensen joining us live from South Austin where one of these fires broke out. Rayanne. Mike and Rebecca, the first fire broke out just before 5 a.m. in northwest Austin. Now, the other one broke out here at this home, and this one was just before 8 a.m. this morning. You can see a lot of damage was done to this home. Firefighters are saying it's pretty much a complete loss. One dog did die in this fire, but luckily because of smoke alarms going off, all of the people were able to escape the burning homes uninjured. You are listening to Down by the Water by the Decemberists. One of the band members, Chris Funk, is in Austin tonight for South by Southwest. But he isn't playing at a normal venue. This one is much more special. Funk joined kids at Dell Children's Medical Center for an air guitar battle as well as a live music show. The kids there got to forget about their troubles for an afternoon and take part in some South by fun. American Idol finalist Haley Reinhardt and the band Air Traffic Controller also perform for the kids. Tonight marked the final red carpet movie premiere for South By. And we are seeing the return of a very famous face to the big screen. Fox 7's Rianne Christensen joins us live from the Paramount Theater to tell us who it is. Mike and Rebecca, Paul Rubens actually got a very warm welcome here at the theater tonight. The streets were lined, and as he got out of the car, people were cheering and chanting Pee Wee. Now, it has been a long time since we have seen Pee Wee Herman, and tonight was his big return to the big screen at his movie premiering here at the South by Southwest Festival. Even though it sounds like he's so fine, you're listening <laughs> to My Sweet Lord by George Harrison. Well, some would say he is fine. <laughs> the former Beatle <laughs> would have turned 73 years old today. Despite being known as the Quiet Beatle, Harrison wrote several of the band's classic songs. Yeah, so many to choose from. Something, Taxman, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and Here Comes the Sun. Of course, he also went on to have an extremely successful solo career before he died in 2001. All right, talk about a big score for a boy in Afghanistan. Yeah, an international soccer star, the best player on the planet, sent him a special present today. Last month, the photo surfaced of a boy wearing a homemade Lionel Messi jersey. Now, Messi plays for Barcelona as well as Argentina's national team. Well, it started, and he started an internet campaign to figure out where this boy was after seeing the photo. Turns out that little guy's name is Murtaza Amdi, and he lives on a rural farm in Afghanistan. And today, Amdi received a special delivery from Messi, a brand new Argentina national team jersey signed by the player, along with a new soccer ball. The United Nations Children's Fund helped Messi with the project. And as you can see, Amdi is pretty excited about the swag, and that was a goal.